All right. You already know what it is. Um, it's another um, another week, another Wednesday. Praise God, we made it to another another Wednesday, another word of words of wisdom Wednesday. All right, so uh, the title of this lesson, what I'm gonna do real quick, Lord willing is um, we are not under the law, but under grace. Because I, I, you know, this is, com this is scripture in the Bible, and we're going to read it. But that saying is used even by people that don't even go to church. You know what I mean? People that don't even, don't do nothing. You know what I mean? All they know is, you know, maybe what their grandparents or what their mother or what their aunties uh, told them. Don't worry about the law because you're under grace now. But... You got to know what you're talking about. You got to know what law we not under. Because if you just throw that out there, we're not under the law, but under grace. What that mean? We're not under the uh, do not kill. So I could kill your, your, your peoples then, right? But you wouldn't want me to do that, right? But according to what you're saying, though, when you throw that out there, I'm not under the law, but under grace. What you're saying is I have a license to sin. You know, like a, uh, like that movie. Wait, was that Samuel? No, was that Samuel and Jackson? License to kill, whatever. You giving me a license to kill, you giving me a license to steal, all of that. When you say, when you throw it out there, we're not under law, we're under grace. You're implying that we don't have to do nothing or that we could go out there and sin. And then when it gets to Sunday, which it ain't even the day you're supposed to be in church anyway, that ain't that's another lesson, and we're going to get on, on, on the reason why. But just the fact that it's spelled S-U-N should let you in a little secret of who you, who you actually worship. But anyway, when you throw that out there, it's like you saying we could do anything, and then when it's time to go to uh, worship the Lord, we could just ask for forgiveness, and we smooth. But wait a minute. If we ask for forgiveness, how we... Not under the law, but under grace. What are we asking forgiveness for then? If you don't have to do nothing, what are we asking forgiveness for then? Right? So again, that already that already does not make sense. So we're gonna we're gonna read that, but we're gonna we're gonna realize something that though we're gonna realize what we're gonna find out what law you not under, and we're gonna understand what Paul is saying. When he said we're not justified by the law. Of course we're not justified by the law. Because we already broke the law. And according to the law. Every man is supposed to die. According to the law. But now we got a a, a. a more perfect and sure sacrifice. Even Jesus Christ the righteous. Therefore he appears before the Lord. Before us. We don't have to take upon that, that sin. Or that death penalty that came with it. Because Christ removed that law off the table when he shed his blood for us. That's the law you're not under. The, 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 the law of sin and death. And we're going to read that scripture too. That's a scripture everybody commonly misses. But let's, let's, go, let's go to uh, Galatians 2, I think. We're just going to start there. We're going to just go to everything you know, folks commonly use. Go to the popular scripture. So, you know, pull out your uh, Bible and read along so you know I'm not lying, right? Because you don't want nobody lying to you, right? When you uh, uh, sign a contract, he got a piece of paper with the contract on it, and you got the piece of paper with the contract on it. You reading everything. You going through the fine print with him, right? So when you got salvation on the line, a covenant to inherit eternal life or everlasting life, or go to the lake of fire, which is a real place. The Lake of Fire is a real place. It'll be here soon. Just like the kingdom of heaven will be to be here soon. But those are other lessons. But, uh, but something as, as important as this, you will want to be reading this with me. You know? So you make sure I'm telling the truth and I ain't sending you up the street. I ain't sending you up the road. But that would be up to you to do. But this is Galatians 2. Let me see. Galatians 2. In verse 16, it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. 
Now, he's not telling you don't have to keep no law. He's not saying none of that. He's saying you cannot be justified by the law itself. Because you still got to do it. That's sin. Matter of fact, hold y'all marker here. We're going to find out what the true definition of sin is. Right? Because that's we need to know. Everybody say you're sinning, right? But nobody can show you. But we're going to show you what sin is. First John chapter 3. And this is how you take judgment out of man's hands. You leave it up to God by reading what God say is sin or not. That's why the Lord said, what is John 12 or something? He said, I don't even judge you. The words that I speak gonna judge you. That's what we're doing. So we ain't judging nobody. We're just here to protect you from death. All right, 1 John 3 and 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says... Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression or the breaking of the law. If you don't know what transgression means, go to the dictionary. It'll tell you to break the law or break a law, right? This is the true definition of what sin is, breaking God's law. Where is God's laws written at? You guessed it, which you already know in the Old Testament that they're telling you not to read. They tell you not to read it so you can continue in sin. And you ain't going to get that grace you're looking for. We're going to read that too. But let's go back to Galatians. We're going to read everything. We're going to read everything. We ain't here to hide nothing. This is Word of Wisdom Wednesday. It's going to be recorded. You can, you can go back later and watch it if you ain't got time right now. But we're going to learn something. It's going to be some wisdom passed through this, through this live feed. Galatians 2, because this is what the Lord wants us to do, to all come to the knowledge, right? And save ourselves, right? Galatians 2 again, in verse 16, it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Let's make sure. So we know the law don't justify you, but we know we believe in Christ and he's going to justify us. Let's see who will be justified, though. That's why you got to keep reading. You got to read everything. You don't just read one verse. and shut, I ain't going to read one verse and be done with the lesson and turn on the music or the piano, right? We're going to keep reading, right? I could be deceiving you or whoever you believe in or trust in. That's giving you the word of God could be could lack understanding or they could be purposely or intentionally trying to deceive you. It could be working for Satan. You never knew that, did you? He said many false prophets shall go into the world and deceive many. But let's go into uh, Romans. Romans. Matter of fact, because we read that no law shall justify you. Let's go to the old and let's see where Paul got that from or if this was something new, right? We're supposed to read the old and the new. They go together. It's one, it's one book, right? It's one book. You don't never read no story halfway in. You don't go to the movie theaters to, to watch a movie halfway in. You don't do nothing. You don't start school halfway in. And this is the most important education you can ever have, education on, on saving yourself from what's to come, destruction. So why would you start halfway in? But we'll, be, we'll, we'll get to that too. So let's go to Psalms. Because I understand we're under the new covenant and all of that. And it appears that you don't have to do nothing. He wrote it. People say, yeah, the, uh, the law is in my heart, so I don't have to do nothing. Matter of fact, while we in Psalms, let's go to Psalms 119 real quick. Let me see if it's in there. I hope it's in here. I know it's in here, but I hope I can find it. If not, I'll read something else. Um, you know what? Let's read it in. Uh, hmm. Matter of fact, let's stay in Psalms uh, 119. Psalms 119 and verse 54, he said, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. 
How's it your song? Because you're always speaking of, of them. You're repeating them. You're rehearsing them so that you can what? Keep them in your heart. Keep them in your mind. He said, I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night and have kept thy law. This I have because I kept thy precepts. Skip down to verse 60. I, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Verse 62, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Let's go into Psalms 37. Let me see. Let's get right to the point. Let me see. Hopefully it's in here. Psalms 37. Let me see. Psalms 37 and verse 30. He said, the mouth of the righteous speak of wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. Verse 31, the law of God is in his heart. Is it right here? No, this is, this is where your memory, this is where your feelings come from, not this. You, people get these transplanted all the time. And they still remember the love they have for you. Because this ain't your heart. This is just a blood pump, a blood vessel. When the Lord speaks of your heart, this is it. Because how we know, he said, he said the law of God is in his heart. Ain't no words in here. Don't no thoughts come, come through here. They all come through here. But what's in it though? He said the law of God it is, is in his heart. Wait a minute. I thought that only happened under the new covenant. That the law would be in your heart. No, the law always has been in your heart. Why? Because the law's always been here. How'd it get in your heart? Someone told it to you. Just like you know not to kill. They knew not to kill back then. You know why? Because somebody told it to them. So now, let's go to what we are actually in Psalms 4. Psalms 143. Psalms chapter 143. Now, Paul says something, right? Paul says something. He said, we ain't, ain't nobody justified by the law on the side of God because we all it, it would determine us guilty. It would. Well, let's see if that was new, what he was saying. This is Psalms 143 and verse 10. Look what David's saying back here. This is Old Testament. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Now he tells you in John 6 and 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And we know the commandments are ordained to life. He said, wherefore in Romans 7 and 12, wherefore the commandment holy, the law holy, just and good. So this is that good spirit, that good word. I know something's good because it'd be open to on everybody's coffee table at their grandma crib. It'd be at your mama crib, open on the coffee table in Psalms. So it got to be true. When they give you a, a, a New Testament Bible, what it got in it? Proverbs and Psalms in it. So if you got a problem with Psalms, then you bugging out. Because we know Psalms got to be good. You can say the rest of it is not good. Whatever. Well, we know Psalms good, right? He said, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. How we know what his spirit is, we don't continue to read it. The, test, the New Testament, all it is doing is testifying of what's already written in the old. Case in point. We read in Galatians 2 that nobody is justified by the law in the sight of God. Let's see. This is uh, Psalm 143 in verse 2. He said, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Don't hurt me. Don't get me because I broke your laws. That's what judgment. That's when the judgment comes, when you break the law. That's why he said the law is not made for a righteous man, but the unrighteous, the murderers, and all of them. That's who it's made for. So if you're not committing any of those sins, then there's no, you can't judge you. There's nothing for you. You don't go to court for something you don't do. Well, shoot, if you're black in America, I guess. Just like the DMV be full of black people like we the only one driving. Right? But that's, we ain't worried about that. Anyway, he said, enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Wait a minute. That's where Paul got it from. To the law of God, it ain't never justify you because we already broke it. Matter of fact, we was born in sin. 
If we're born in sin, that means death is on us. Somebody has to remove that from us. And the law cannot do that because if the Lord goes to the law, he's going to see something you done broke. And what's going to be your punishment? What's your punishment supposed to be? Death. But when you have Christ, you have belief in Christ, he will justify you. But who is he justifying? Let's go into Romans 2 now. Romans the second chapter. Romans 2. See, when you're not trying to trick nobody, the Bible becomes very simple, becomes very simple don't it? Romans 2. Romans 2. And I'm not saying just because things are difficult to learn means somebody lying. I ain't saying that. But you can see the difference when somebody's trying to help you and show you the word of God unfeigned. You can tell. So let's read this Romans 2. He says, verse 12, he's for, for as many have sinned. Romans 2 and 12. Romans 2 and 12. He said, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. So you don't do the law. You ain't got it. It don't matter. You're going to perish. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So you're damned if you, you do. You're damned if you don't. But this is what we want. This, we want this next verse. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Wow. So when it says no one is justified by the law of God, justified by the law in the sight of God, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. And it said we are justified by Christ. Who is he justifying? Those that are living out here doing wickedness, doing whatsoever they want to, and then trying to pray when Sunday come or when church come. No, the doers of the law are the ones that will be justified. Let's go into Romans 6 and let's go to the verse in question in which this lesson is titled after, you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6. Romans 6. You know what? Romans 3 real quick, just so we know that ain't nothing wrong with the law and that it actually shows your faith. And we will find out your works determine who you serve, whether God or Satan, no in between, no gray area, none of that. You either have the Lord, the God Almighty, and the Son, or Satan, Hashatan, is is either one. You don't get to pick. You don't get to be halfway. Romans three and thirty one, because we read about the faith of Jesus Christ, right? And 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 his and in God's sight, no man is justified. Well, well, that's always been the case. No man has ever been justified by keeping the law. We always needed Christ, and we're gonna read that at the end of this lesson. He said, "Do we then make void the law through faith?" Wait a minute. Folks is telling us all we got to do is believe. We don't have to do nothing no more. Christ did it all. We ain't got to do nothing. Christ did it all. We ain't got to do nothing. Christ did it all. We are. They say, do we then make void the law? So we, do we make the, the law no good because we got faith in Jesus? What does it say? God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. If we know Christ delivered us from death, then yeah, we better establish the law because that's what had him coming in the first place because we were under death. We brought ourselves up under death. We, we did that. We brought ourselves into bondage. That was death, bondage to the law. What law? Death. He had to remove that bondage. We were guilty in a, in a sinless man who was God in, in the flesh who came down from heaven Die for the sins of man. He delivered us from that bondage. If we look at the Passover, a murderer was in bondage. His sin got him into what? Bondage, captivity, jail. A sinless man went in, Christ Jesus. A guilty man came out, removed from that bondage of sin. So we should be keeping the Passover too. That's what it represents, being under his blood, right? We all claim to be under his blood, but nobody want to acknowledge it. And it ain't once a month or every third Sunday. No, it's the Passover. You can read it in Leviticus 23rd chapter. If you have a hard time figuring out the schedule, I'll post it when it's time. Matter of fact, I'll post it after this lesson. I'll post the schedule of when the next Passover is, along with the feast days, which point to Christ, which are a shadow of things to come. I'll post those as well. So we all aware and we got classes all across the country for you to partake in the Lord's body. 
So now, he said, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. That's what he got. This guy, this guy messaging me cashes, man, while I'm on the thing. He said, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Of course you established the law because that's why Christ had to come because we broke the law. Romans 6, and we'll go to the verse in question. Romans 6, and we'll read verse 15. We'll read verse 15 because this is where the, where the title comes from. He says, what then? No, no, verse 14, I'm sorry. He says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. This implies that before, before Christ came, sin did have dominion over you. You were in bondage to it, enslaved to it, to sin, which entail is death. And we'll read that too. He said, for sin shall, have not, for shit, for sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. Oh, we ain't got to do nothing. No, that ain't what it say. We ain't read that yet. Let's see what, what's supposed to happen when you, when you sin. Verse 23. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's that grace. The eternal life he placed back on the table through his blood. He removed that, that bondage off the table. This law, this payment that was supposed to come with sin that had the men over us. He removed that. Where did Paul get this from? Let's go see. Psalms 19. For someone to say the Old Testament, you don't have to read it no more, is unwise. Because if Paul, the apostles, Christ and them didn't deal with the Old Testament, we wouldn't have no new one. They wouldn't have nothing to testify of. And even in Revelation 11, he tell you in Revelation 19, well, Revelation 11 specifically tell you the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. This all testifies of him to come. But Psalm 19, Psalm 19, he said, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What is he talking about? Psalms 19. And look how he talk about the law, period. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. No way. The way they talk about the law now, you wouldn't even know any script like this that say that the law of the Lord is perfect. Now, I wonder in Psalm 37, he had the law in his heart. He said in Psalms 143, you leave me with your good spirit, your spirit good, even perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. And what will it do? It says converting the soul. So the sinless, the sinner you were before, once you come across this law, which tell you thou shalt not, you stop doing that and you become someone new. That's what a new creature is all about. You have to be washed with the water, which will cleanse your mind, which leads you to physically getting dipped in that water. And you, you will continue in that living a new life for Christ redeemed you from the curse of the law, which is death and. He forgave you for your sins that are past. You can read that in Romans 3 and 25. Christ uh, gave us forgiveness for our sins that are past, not past, present, and future. No, that don't, it don't really work that way. It don't work that way at all. You can't mean it. You can't, oh, yeah, the Lord forgive me, and then go back doing the old, same old stuff. Now, if you make a mistake, because in the flesh it gets tough, because Satan don't want you to keep the law. He don't. He don't. Oh, yeah, he only, he only didn't want us to keep the law in the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, he wants you to keep it. That would, that would be what we're saying if you saying that if you try to keep the law, you sin it. That's what I, how it's taught. And we know that's, that's blasphemy. But anyway, back to what I was reading. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So once you realize, oh, I can't, uh, 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 Kill no more. I know I'm using is it, people be killing, but we read we run into the law, and everybody know you as a murderer and a killer. Now you read the law and it says thou shalt not kill. Now you keeping that and you've been converted to something else. Now they look at you as the killer, but you're not killing no more. So they're like, man, that brother doesn't change. He used to be a killer. Why? Because he was converted by the law. That 
this has to be good. Regardless of Christ coming, this still has to be good. It wouldn't make sense for you to know Christ's very reason for coming was because of sin to continue in it or to go back in it after realizing that. That's why he said, shall we make void the law through sin? God forbid that we establish the law. We continue in the law. Christ redeemed us from death in our past sins. So let's go into a new way of living, become a new creature, being convert, walking in this conversion of a new soul per the perfect law. So he said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. So whatever we testify unto the Lord, that's a fact. It's sure. Making wise the simple. So if you didn't know nothing before you picked up the Bible, start reading it and you will know some afterwards. Trust me, folks are testified of the wisdom the Lord gave me. They be like, this Bible big, but you make it seem so small. Yeah, because... The Lord made me wise when I was simple. I started out simple and was made wise according to this. This right here. So now let's get to what Paul was quoting because we only got a limited of time because it's word of God Wednesday. It's real short and sweet. So what did he say down here in verse 13? He said, matter of fact, since we're on the law still, Read, we're going to read verse 11 because he said the law of the Lord is perfect and all of that. Matter of fact, we're going to read verse 8. He said the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart because it's going to make you wise. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Again, making you wise. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't do that. Oh, shoot. This say no, no, sh crimp, no shrimp, crab, lobster, none of that. I didn't know that. Oh, now you know. Now you wise. Oh, the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week, which we call Saturday. Oh, I pulled out my phone. It's an S in the beginning of the week and an S at the end of the week. Oh, seven. Look in another language. Seven, Saturday, Sabado. That's what it means. Sabbath, seven. But you became wise when you ran across it. He said it enlightened your eyes. Now, in verse 13, what else would uh, take place here? He said, keep back thy servant also. From presumptuous sins. Presumptuous means to sin at will. He said, keep me back from doing that, please. Let them not have dominion over me. What? Ain't that what we read in Romans 6? The law shall not have dominion over you. Because you are not under the law. For He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law, but under grace. But he's saying the same thing. Where did Paul get it from? Right here. Let the sins not have the men over me. Same thing. It ain't nothing new. So when they say, uh, let's go, let's go back and read that, matter of fact. After we finish this, he said, Let them not have the men over me, then I shall be upright. Once you are truly forgiven and Christ has removed that penalty of death that had the men over you, you could be upright. You could be new. You forgiven. You walk into something new now. That old man is past. He said you put away that sinful flesh. And that representation of, of that happening is in when you get baptized. But it starts with reading of the book and being watched with this right here. He said, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and what? And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. That death penalty coming. If you don't have Christ to forgive you, but you must change your ways. You must be, be converted. Now let's go back to Romans 6. Now we got a little more understanding now. Now let's read it with some more understanding. And then change our ways according to, accordingly. Because it don't do nothing. He said, for the hearers of the law are not just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So it ain't good for y'all to sit here and watch me and listen and not do nothing about it. That wouldn't make no sense. Romans, back to Romans. And as soon as I find it, we can start. Romans 6. And we're going to start at verse 1 now. And we're going to walk our way into verse 14 and understand, get some more understanding. He says in verse 1, Romans 6 and 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is sin? We read it in the opening. 
Sin is the breaking of God's laws, which are contained in the Old Testament and the New. They all, they all over the Bible. But we know what the law is. When folks say you ain't under that old law, they know what you, we, we know what you're talking about. And they know what they're talking about, but it's wrong. That old law that you are not under, they don't even say that old law anyway. But anyway, the law you're not under is that sin, the law of sin and death. The law that determines you worthy of death, he removed that. We're going to read that too. But he said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall, shall we continue breaking God's law that grace may abound? What's the answer to that? God forbid. God forbid. Hey, number C. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? Wait a minute. How are you dead to sin? Because we read that perfect law which converted the soul. So you dead to that. Like you know how we, we good at this nowadays. I'm dead in you. So you need to dead that old man. Keep that same energy when it's time to repent from breaking God's law. Dead that old man. Dead that person you used to be. Because he said, how can you continue in sin knowing Christ died for you? Why would, do that make sense? You're supposed to be dead to sin. Why would you go back to doing the same stuff and then trying to, when it's time for church, then trying to pray again? That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. That's like your, your significant other stepping out on you every weekend and then by the time the week starts, oh, will you forgive me, baby? Please, please forgive me. You, gonna, that don't even, you wouldn't even go for that. And we are made in God's image. You think he going for that? Absolutely not. Now let's go back into Romans 6 and 14. He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Now let's go to Romans 8, because this is a continued continue thought, even from Romans 5. But let's go to Romans 8. We ain't, you know, we're not hiding anything. We can read Romans 7. All, well, I can read the whole Romans to you, but it wouldn't make so, no sense to do that especially with the time limitations and an, and an amount of knowledge getting dumped on you, this little 30, 45 minute session is enough, especially when you ain't never been taught this or taught the word correctly. So what did, what did the Lord say here? Romans 8 and 1. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? You've been converted, forgiven, and you walking in a new way. So if you're walking according to his law, what is there to con condemn you of? There's no judgment. There's no law against you because you are walking in Christ Jesus. It said we should follow his steps, right? Matter of fact, we're going to come right back. Go into, let's see, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. You know, it's all in the Bible. That's why it's, you know, I advise you to get a Bible so you can read it with me. So you know ain't nobody trying to lie to you. This is uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter, and it said, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter, the second chapter, in verse 21, it said, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Did he do any type of sin? Let's see. Who did no sin? So now when you were walking in Christ Jesus, there's now for thou therefore no condemnation. How not? Because you're walking in his steps. Did he sin? No. So if you're walking in the steps of a sinless life, which we know you have to try to perfect, what can you be judged by? What can you be condemned by? Nothing. All right. Let's go back to Romans. Romans. Again, the Bible is real simple when nobody's trying to lie to you. Romans 6, you could be like, oh, my pastor wouldn't lie to me. Listen, he said, cursed be the man that trusted, trusted the man. That's in Psalms 18 and Jeremiah 17. You cursed if you trusted the man that much. Where you could read something out of the, out of the Bible and you can let somebody tell you it don't mean what it says. Anyway, Romans 6, I mean, Romans 8, back to Romans 8, therefore no condemnation, because we got to figure out, we got to make sure we can all read together what law the Lord redeemed you from. Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, Christ Jesus, 
who walk not after the flesh. So you don't do what you want to do, right? But after the spirit, again, he said in John 6 and 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Even in Romans 7 and 14, Romans 7 and 14, he said the law is spiritual. So if you're walking after a, a, something that's spiritual, then you are walking after Christ and not your flesh. Matter of fact, pay attention to this scary verse right here. This verse should scare you. This is Romans 8 still. Verse 6, he said, for to be carnally minded is death. So if you do what you want to do, you're on a path of death in which Christ died to redeem you from. You back on that course. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What is it, what is it saying in verse 7? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Wait a minute. If you walk out to the flesh, you hate God. That's what enmity means. Go read in your dictionary what enmity means. It means to hate. He said because the carnal mind is enmity against God. How does the carnal mind hate God? Pay attention. Look what it says. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. If you're not spiritually minded, you can't be subject to a spiritual law. If you're not subject, meaning you're not under dominion or rule of. We know this has to be different than what we read in Romans 6. But he said, shall we continue in sin? That's law breaking. That grace may abound. God forbid. So now when it said, because the carnal mind is enemy against God, it is not subject it won't listen to the law of God. If you don't listen to the law of God, according to Paul, in the word of God, you hate him. So now let's go back to verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the spirit, but after the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from what? The law of sin and death. That's what we're not under. Because Christ delivered us from that. The wages of sin is death. Christ paid the price for that. Go back to Romans 6. And we'll be finishing up. Verse Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He delivered you from the law of sin and death. So now let's read 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because if sin has dominion over you, that means death is over you. For you are not under the law. What law? The law of sin and death. You have an opportunity of eternal life. Why? How do we know? He said, because you're under grace. But is that a license to continue breaking the law? What do we read in verse 1? God forbid. Matter of fact, let's read 15. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. What he said, God forbid. Now let's go into Colossians. And then we're going we're gonna to finish it off. Colossians. We're going to start at one real quick. Just to prove all this. Colossians 1. Make sure. Colossians 1. Look what, look, look, what it, look what happened. Look what we was doing or what we had to come. If he didn't come die. He said, verse 12, giving thanks. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. What is that? Verse 13, he'll tell you. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. So when we was walking in sin, we were in bondage to darkness because we was going into everlasting shame and content. That's outer darkness. He was talking about in Matthew 8, Lake of Fire. That's what we was on the path to. He said, who have delivered us from the power of darkness. So if you know he delivered you from the power of darkness, do that make sense to go back into darkness, which is sinning? Because that's where sin come from, Satan. Yeah, he the ruler of the darkness. Right. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. How? In whom we have redemption. Redemption from what? Death, the law of sin and death, you were redeemed from that. The law itself cannot do that for you. The law only showed that we deserve death. He said, who have delivered us from the power in verse 13 of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption 
Through his blood, even what? Even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 19, for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace. Through what? Through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies. Wait a minute. We read if you are not subject to the law, you are, you, that's enmity with God. You are enemy of him. Oh, they say, and you. And me too. I used to be that way too. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by what? Wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body, verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and irreprovable in his sight because your sins have been forgiven. This is how you're justified. But do you go back to breaking the law? God forbid, we already seen that. That's why there's an if statement in this next verse. Verse 23, if, so he will, 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 uh, he will present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in the sight of God, if what? If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You have to continue in this faith then. Colossians, the second chapter, let's go right there. And this is a verse commonly used as well. And then after this, we're going to go to one or two more spots and it's over. So now, Colossians 2, he says, verse uh, hmm, 10, he say, and you are complete in him. Who? In Jesus. Because you, you keep in his commandments and you have faith in him. That's a completion. You can read that in Revelations 14 or 12 and 14. Something like that. 14 and 12. One of the two. It's the 12 and the 14 in it. For in him dwelleth, uh, verse 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands in the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. So Christ removed those sins from you. He said what? You were buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. So your baptism was a sign of that removal of that old flesh, that conversion, that, that dead, put, that, put away that, that dead man, that old man in the grave. The baptism was a sign of you doing that. He said, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. So you was dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your sins. That's what trespasses mean. How did he do it? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. You can read Deuteronomy 25. At the end of every one of those laws, there was a curse behind it, which led to death. Those were the handwriting of ordinances that was against you because your sins was against you. He had to blot those sins out. He, didn't have to, he, didn't, he had to blot that law that determined you worthy of death. He had to blot that out. And how did that get in the books? Because your sin got it in there. So he had to blot out your sin as well. If he blot out the sin, there's no punishment. The, the, the law can't be enforced without sin, right? You can read that in uh, Romans 4. Where there is no law, sin cannot be imputed. He said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Was any law of God against us? Absolutely not. Your sins was against you. That was the dominion held over you, your sin, which leads to death being over you. He said, body out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. What got nailed to the cross? Your sins. Our sins got nailed to the cross. Let's make sure. Because it said you were going to blot it out, blot out the handwriting of ordinances. Let's go see where, again, where's Paul getting this stuff from? Go on to Isaiah 44. Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Isaiah 44. So you are not under that law. That's a fact. But if you go back into sin, you go right back under the law of death. Because the ways of sin is death. But Christ was 
brought grace to deliver you from that. Don't go back into doing it or you back under it. It's simple. It's really simple. But let's see what was blotted out in the prophecy of it being blotted out because the New Testament is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So we see this blotting out. Where did it come from? This is Isaiah 44 and 22. Isaiah 44 and 22. Matter of fact, 21. Look what he said. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel. So he still loved his people. Israel, that's you. If you're black, you was, your ancestors were sent into slavery throughout all the four corners of the earth. That would be you. And there's a, a, a big population of us in, in the heart of Ham, which is Africa, too. You got to, to, to the Ibu Chaz, Limba, Hausa, to name a few. He said, Ashanti, remember these, O Jacob, in Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. He said, folks think Israel done away with, but the Lord said, you shall never be forgotten of me. This is how we know. Let's read this next verse. I have blotted out. Uh-oh, we, we read some about blotting in Colossians, right? I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy what? Thy transgressions. Those, that's what was against you. And as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. We can read in Galatians 3 that Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. He said, turn back to me. I redeemed you from the curse. From that death sentence, I redeemed you from that. Turn back to me. That's why he said, though grace may abound. I mean, shall we continue in sin? Though grace may abound, God forbid. He said, I redeemed you, turn to me. Let's read the 45th chapter. Let's read it one more time. Isaiah 45. No, no, I'm sorry. Isaiah 43, I'm sorry. Isaiah 43. Let's read it again. Isaiah 43 and 25. He say, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions. For mine own sake, so he can save y'all, to save us, and will not remember thy sins. But look at this next verse. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Let's go into Psalms the 45th, I mean Isaiah the 45th chapter, and we'll finish it here. So we know who we're dealing with. Isaiah 45 and 23. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall, come, shall swear. You read that in Philippians, the very same thing, that at the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. But what does he say about himself? Verse 25. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Though the law itself cannot justify you, you must keep it along with believing on Jesus Christ where he have redeemed you from the law of sin and death. Peace.